We've learned that the unique sound of each instrument comes from its shape and how it resonates. But when you add electrons, vacuum tubes, and antennas to the mix, things get even more interesting. Oh Let's visit a remarkable workshop in Santa Fe to learn more about this. It's a place filled with rare antique clocks and vintage electronics, too. The man at the center of this collection is Andrew Barron. You can hear him now playing one of his prized possessions. Hey, Andrew. Chris, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for sharing me your workshop. It's my pleasure. This is fantastic. This is an original theremin? It is. It's one of the 120 or so that survived from the original 1929 production by RCA. That's amazing. And how does it work? Uh, well, it responds to an electrical quality that every body possesses called capacitance, the ability to store an electrical charge. And that capacitance can alter the frequency of the instrument when you bring your hand near it. That's fantastic. So one of these antennas controls the frequency and the other controls the loudness. Exactly right, yes. When you bring your hand close to this antenna, the note goes higher. And if you want to make it louder, you can bring your left hand up over this loop on the left side of the cabinet. So we've been talking about how instruments like the violin produce these rich, complex sounds in which it's not just the note you think you hear, that there are higher harmonics that add to the sound's complexity. Yes. So this is an electronic instrument. You might think it would make a boring, simple beep, but uh -huh. the sound is so much richer than that. Leon Theremin wanted something that was harmonically rich, that would emulate the sound of orchestra instruments. And he did it by having two frequency generators in the instrument. We call them oscillators. Theremin connected one of those oscillators to this antenna that controls the pitch. And so when you bring your hand near it, it shifts the frequency of that one oscillator and it tugs on the other and it uh -huh. actually pulls that pure symmetrical wave into a different shape. It creates a more complex yes, sound wave. Yes, exactly right. Uh, if you were to put a microphone in front of a cello and connect it to an oscilloscope and look on screen, you would have something that looks like a, a cursive lowercase letter R, like this. And the theremin emulates that wave shape by virtue of blending those two oscillators the way it does. Can I try it out? Sure. Okay. I, I promise gonna, I won't break it. That's all right. Come over here. Rest your hand on top here. Okay. And you can set the volume to a comfortable level by literally how much you move your pinky toward that antenna. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and lift your finger a little bit. That's good. And we can hold it for a level. I'm going to adjust the pitch over here. And let me lead this for the moment, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So it's sensing the capacitance of my hand. Yes. And then I saw you doing these very delicate, detailed motions with your hand to yeah. control the pitch. Yeah, there are people who have developed that to a much higher level. I'm uh -huh. an amateur on this instrument, obviously. <laughs> People associate this now with bad sci-fi and horror movies, mm -hmm. but back in the 20s and 30s, this was a, an instrument, it was part of the orchestra, people wrote music for it, there were That's great right. players. Mm -hmm. The original uh, repertoire was actually all classical in, in the first uh, uh, decade or so of the instrument's existence. Theremin himself was a conservatory student, his instrument was cello, and so it wasn't until 1945, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, using theremin in the soundtrack of a movie called Spellbound uh -huh. and to give uh, this uh, spooky ambiance, this kind of undertone of, of suspense. And who were the great players, the famous virtuosi of, of the theremin back in the, back in the day? The uh, really superstar of her day was Clara Rockmore and uh, she performed with uh, the Philadelphia Orchestra uh, playing uh, Thurman uh, as a soloist, and uh, 
her her prowess with the instrument, uh, uh, no one came even remotely close to that for decades. Let's relive the glory days of the theremin and listen to Clara Rockmore. Sure. Mm -hmm. 